Hello everybody, today I would like to introduce you to developing with Chromium and to do that I will go through some of our uh, tech and so forth. First of all, this is the vault that we use for registering account. I will create a new account here called Jack uh, with a password. Of course, uh, like any crypto wallet, it will display me 12 words that I have to copy and remember. I will, for now, just put them here. So we have FAT uh, license. If everything is fine, here we have an account created. We can see that we have 200 test code tokens that we created since we are in a development environment. We don't really care about it. You can get the tokens. And uh, here we have um, the demo that I will show you later. So. Another interesting uh, feature that we have is the Explorer, um, which is uh, this link here. And here we can see all the transactions that have been, uh, that are occurring. Now, what if I want to develop uh, something with Chrome? Well, the first thing to do probably is to go on this uh, repository in Bitbucket. called develop Chromium. You can clone it and we're going to do that. Let's create a new session and um, experiments, demos. We have something now, so we can clone it. Here is downloading this kind of uh, bootstrap project with all the things that are needed in order to develop something on our blockchain. And meanwhile, we can switch on Docker because we will need it. Seems like to be done, so. Uh, maybe something we can do, we can go on Eclipse and open it. Close my current projects and let's import it. Here we can see the structure uh, comes from. This is uh, actually all the part is smart contract. And uh, this is the client part. So the client, uh, the software used by the blockchain to, to run the smart contract and this RAL folder, we do have uh, our smart contract. FT3 is uh, the code it will be used in, in, a, in, a, in this application that is uh, pre-made. And uh, it contains all the information about blockchain, tokens, and accounts. So uh, he has some interesting features as well, the single sign-on uh, single sign -on mechanism. Um, now that we have uh, Docker running, we can uh, use uh, our uh, Docker component. So, we actually deliver a database, a Postgres database ready to be used and to run it, just hit docker compose up. I will write minus D because I don't want to see, I would attach it, I don't want to see uh, what's doing. What it is doing instead, I will show it to you, is opening a um, Postgres database on port 54333. Um, yeah. Um, something else we can do is uh, uh, run the blockchain that I just showed you. So it's very minimal. Uh, all it does here, we have some code that you can uh, check in order to get up and running with, and, and, and see how you can write your custom logic. But all we do is implement uh, this basic uh, uh, library. This basic library essentially um, uses these functions. So it imports all the uh, operation uh, transaction that you can call from account uh, some other minority stuff from 
uh, other packages and uh, transfer here. So let's run this blockchain. To do that, just we have to call uh, from root, so you will use it, it's easier. Post chain bin run uh, node dot sh is like a script, and we want to run the development mode, uh, development folder. The development folder, we can see it here. So um, we have config nodes and the nodes we have all the different uh, uh, blockchains we can run and uh, here you have a folder dev and we'll put all the information about uh, the node your, your test node um, here for example you have the address of uh, uh, the database the postgres database which is uh, uh, 0.0.0.0, .0, .0 at port 5433 as i showed before um, the name of the schema that we're going to use, the username, the password, the username and password, if you're going to use Docker, uh, will be the same, of course. The port that uh, we want to use. Uh, if you notice here, I overwrote the port, so this is something you can do, of course. And uh, public key and private keys here. Uh, you can see it are just standard in this case. We shouldn't use it in a live environment though. And uh, here we have interesting thing is uh, a sort of configuration of FT3. Here we have the module that we load first. In this case, it's empty. There is nothing, so we get the first file into the folder uh, source folder. Uh, entry file is written here and is rel source. So it will get the first module we find, which is this module here. So this will be the entry file and indeed we are importing all the rest, uh, all the other uh, files here. Now, something we want to show is that we want to uh, add custom parameters in uh, this uh, um, uh, module. And indeed, if we go to get a quick overview over here, library, FT3, and core and we can see that the module which is the entry file uh, of uh, this link is like sort of index.js for javascript we see that we are expecting some arguments uh, such as my blockchain name my blockchain website the description rate limit if you want rate limit uh, max points to give to a users maximum points that a user can collect um, uh, after how many seconds uh, the user can get new points and uh, um, how many points he gets at the moment of creation of the account. And here we set them. So we can see that, for example, your app name, we will have to uh, change it. We'll be like Chromia Test uh, Tutorial. The website will be uh, for now localhost for 3000. And your app description, yeah. Just to do it. Um, other thing here, we have a rate limiter. Here we say that we want it with one, zero, we don't want it. Um, the maximum amount of points that are possible to store is 10, so a user will never have more than 10 points. Or so essentially, we would not be able to make more than 10 requests in, a, in, in one time. And uh, it will get one point every 30 seconds. So it's a cooled off period, cool down period. And uh, yeah, at the moment of creation of the account, it gets one, uh, one point, one rate limit point. So here we have it running. Important thing to note down is um, the blockchain RID, which should be written somewhere here. Uh, probably is even worth to uh, write it down somewhere if uh, uh, might be very useful yep and we send it back now 
we can actually uh, now that we have the now the blockchain running, we can check if it's actually running. To do that, we go back to the block explorer and we uh, add our chain. I already have it here, so I will remove it. Um, first of all, the name of the chain we will call it Chromium Tutorial. Uh, the host is HTTP uh, colon slash local host and port is uh, 7741 because uh, if you remember I changed it here when I run it uh, that website HTTP uh, slash local host 3000 is not running yet, but we will act as if. And then this one. Now, if I go here, probably I will see something. There are blocks that have been published, but I do not see transaction. Indeed, we did not send any transaction. Um, so, yeah, let's do it. Um, let's go back to the same folder uh, of before and it was in uh, experiments document experiment demos i go inside client folder and we see this and then i will open with code which is the id i usually use uh, for this kind of things um good uh, this is the idea I use for my client uh, uh, development. Here, we can see that we have some routes implemented. Uh, we have the login, actually. Meanwhile, I will uh, mm, I will run a npm install, yarn install. So uh, while the computer is working, I can explain a bit about this. Uh, file uh, about this uh, project. Um, here we have a router and uh, it has already some routes implemented. For example, as the single sign login and the single sign SAS uh, root. This essentially provides um, this essentially provides a login system built in in Chromium, the centralized. So essentially, uh, the user only have to remember the one private key, which is the one I inserted at the beginning of the video. Uh, all the Every application will have a different uh, uh, keeper. So in case you use an application that is not safe, you don't compromise your main account. And also it means that you do not have to remember all the keys. So it's not every application will have a different key, a uh, keeper. Here is finished to install. And, but I want to show you uh, the single sign-on demo. So this is what we are going to do. This is a single sign-on uh, website. And uh, if we go here in the vault uh, and I log in, uh, I can see that there is this single sign-on app. I click and I get redirected here. What it says is you can try to log in, uh, and by pushing this button, you're doing it a fully decentralized way. Um, here we can get uh, just uh, for uh, curious people the name of the blockchain. So essentially, if we go to check this blockchain here in the block explorer, um, we will see it. Not going to do it, but because uh, I don't want to lose too much time. So when I click sign in with Chromia, I will input the same password of my vault. Here I'm redirected to the vault. Sign in, and then authorize. Uh, this test application to get a keeper. So uh, you get basically generate a keeper and we are delegating this keeper to auto uh, to operate on our, on our behalf. Of course, we cannot uh, uh, use the same keeper in other chain, in other apps. Here it worked. And uh, I see that I'm logged in. Uh, indeed, it was quite easy. And here we can register a name for this user. So I will just have to check because that's the name I picked up. And here it says, welcome back, Jack. Now, the interesting thing is that we didn't really put any password besides the one we created previously for the vault. Indeed, if I decide to log out and to log in again, I will have to just input the very same password. And this uh, workflow 
can be implemented only on the phone. So for example, I can have my phone, take a screen, take a, a, video, a picture of uh, the QR code displayed and automatically log in. So I'm never putting my private key into a desktop computer or iPad or whatever that I do not control very closely, such as my phone. Here I authorize it. And here inside I'm again uh, logged in and I can see my name, Jack, has been remembered. This is because it's in the chain. Now, um, let's try to implement this. So, um, I don't want to remember the password. Um, here we have it installed. I'm going to start it. And I don't want it on Chrome, I want it on Brave, because I'm using Brave. Now it's thinking, of course, um, but it will not work. The reason why it will not work is that we did not set up this file. So here we have an environment um, an environment uh, uh, .amb uh, file, and uh, we have to create it uh, uh, our own so we have to make it work. We can use this sample, so I will use this profile because we actually tried it. We will actually try it with. Uh, the real world, so the one that is live. All it's needed is, besides the localhost, which uh, we already know is localhost 7741, is the blockchain ID, but we actually have it here. And we're gonna set it up. Now I'm gonna relaunch it because I want to read the .m file. It will reopen Google, but, uh, Google Chrome, but I don't want it. And then we wait it to, um, to run. Here it is. So now we are logged in. Uh, all I did, uh, I uh, would like to remind, is just to download this folder. This folder, uh, this is a project is running and it says only one thing, try to log in. So we're going to do that. But before, we're going to add this custom app in our in our vault, so in our vault, personal vault, we want to see uh, this application because we are testing, we want to be able to log in there. And nobody can prevent it, so it's not that Chromium one day can decide that your application is not going to implement a single sign-on. It will be, uh, it's basically unstoppable because it's pretty decentralized. The name of the dab will be Chromium Tutorial once again. The host, uh, HTTP, Double slash local host four seven seven four one website HTTP double slash local host three thousand and the chain ID once again we have it here I'm gonna copy from this file this time here it is added now we did the same thing here as we did in the block explorer okay maybe close this one no, I think you never know um, here we can see Chrome tutorial. Here we can see it, and nobody knows about this blockchain. And yet, I'm able to use all the tools of the big guys. Um, good. So we're gonna to log. We're trying to log in, and here is the login page. I'm gonna close the vault because it's gonna open now. And I decide to sign in with Chrome. I do it. Put my password again. Now, the problem here is that probably there is something wrong in the right direction, so we're going to check it one more time. And indeed, uh, I changed it uh, before it was, uh, it was using this uh, spec session here that we should not put. So I change it and I redeploy. Again, I will look at host. Here on the Explorer, I can see that some time has passed, of course. Now I can try to log in again with Chromium. I get it redirected here, put my password second time. And here I should see an authorization page, and did I see? Um, I'm gonna authorize it. And here I'm logged in. Um, I can see this is my ID. And this is really everything you have to do. Now we are ready to set the uh, operation to play a game or whatever into this page. 
Here, if we're going to refresh this page, we can see that something happened. We have the first transaction error in this blockchain, in this block, and actually this block. Um, the transaction was actually registering a user, uh, the FT3 development register account with these parameters and uh, adding an authenticator to the script. So how does it work is that the account ID that was present in the vault, in the chain where, the, where there is the vault, sign a transaction that, that, uh, that, uh, um, uh, that account and uh, then sends it to the that that we're just uh, running, so this uh, uh, simple app we are sending. It will receive a transaction with that signature, it will upload to the blockchain and add the authenticator descriptor. So the transaction is signed from the vault and the private key will never be seen by the, your app, but <coughs> you will be able to see the transaction uh, already signed and uh, with the new keeper that you just passed from uh, your app in, in the first redirect. And, uh, and yeah, here it is. You can indeed see what are the um, the keeper with local storage. Here I see that this is the keeper of the user.